Hi, today I'm going to talk about adding an HC SRO4 ultrasound range sensor to DVD, my DIY dev droid. I'm going to add two, one at the front and one at the back. I've done a previous video on the HC SRO4 and connected it to the Pico, along with the different strategies we can use to integrate it into our code. So today I'm going to focus on the ROS2 side to be able to publish a range message and visualize the sensor values against the robot model within Arvis. So DDD will have its own targeting or collision avoidance capability. Range is going to be a really helpful for me as I work on DDD's odometry, calculating DDD's position in space based on the wheel movement and checking this is correct. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Just a quick recap on DDD. DDD is a three-wheeled robot for the purpose of experimentation with robotics and ROS2 using the Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi 4. DDD is driven by two 12 volt motors on the front two wheels. A dual H-bridge drives the motors and rotary encoders measure the speed. Speed management is handled by the Pico along with some sensors. High level ROS2 functions such as mapping, navigation and communication will be handled by the Raspberry Pi 4. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay are a great partner for any maker, able to manufacture PCB boards, undertake 3D printing or CNC builds, as well as sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding. The service is required for any droid building project. PCBWay also hosts pages on makers' projects, so why not check out what other makers are building? In this video, we're going to add an HC SR04 range sensor to DDD. In fact, two of them, one at the front and one at the back. These are ultrasound range sensors. They're 5 volt devices, um, so they will require 5 volt power, and they will give an output signal of 5 volts, so I'm going to use a voltage divider in order to safely connect that up to my Pico. I've shown how to do all of that in a previous video. The HC SRO4s are located on the front and the back of DDD. I've placed a um, special little bracket on the front to put that connector on and put a, a nice little uh, sensor on there. And on the back, I've actually been able to just plug it straight into my breadboard that's sitting on the uh, back of uh, DDD. So they're there. Of course, having them there in the real world is not enough. I also need them there in the uh, virtual world. So ROS2 is going to know where to find our HCSR4 um, sensors. That's quite important because knowing that uh, the sensor is 30 centimeters away is not enough. We need to know then when that, that sensor is in relationship to the center of DVD. So here in Arvis, I've got a little model um, of my very simple version of DDD and you can see that I've just put a couple of little rectangle blocks in there to be our sensors and I've placed them in their relative position in the virtual world. From the DDD repo I've actually got a new project uh, for HSC SRO4s and um, this Arvis definition or actually the URDF is in, in the ROS2 workspace. So in there we've got a, um, a folder for Droid 1 and we've got a URDF model and it's this model that's actually drawing those things out. So if we have a look in here we will find that I have uh, something called range front defined. Range front is just a very small little box uh, that's going to be red and that's about all there is there and we've got range back. So these are my two little sensors. And then I've got a linkage which connects them into where they actually fit. There we go. So we've got the motor chassis is where the front one is connected onto and I've got its offset to that. And then I've got one on the back and I've got its offset. I've got to have the right rotations on these so that they're pointing in the right direction. Otherwise uh, ROS2 will get very confused. But there are my two sensors. That's how um, we're locating them within uh, the virtual ROS2 sp uh, space, so we know where things are. In the ROS2 world, we're going to produce a range message from our sensor. 
And this is the definition of the range message. It's got a standard header, the radiation type, which is either infrared or ultrasound, the field of view, i.e. the uh, <coughs> angle at which uh, the sensor is actually um, funneling data into, the minimum range and maximum range that, that we can sense, and the actual range figure that we're actually recording. The standard header, really the key thing for us is that frame ID in there, because of course we've got two sensors and we've got to use the frame name for each of those two sensors in order to get the data to the right point and to understand its right point. So we have that front range and that back range that we define in the URDF file. And that's what we're going to be placing into that string ID. So for the other th um, fields, uh, the radiation type is zero, which is ultrasound. The field of view, well that's 0.52 radians. It needs to be in radians to, for the ROS2 ecosystem. That's their standard SI type. Uh, the minimum range I'm putting as one centimeter. The maximum range is one meter. Uh, these sensors can go a little bit further than that. Actually, I'm getting sort of easily 1.4, but to give a reliable figure, I'm going to limit it to one meter. I think that's enough for my use, which is basically collision avoidance. And uh, then, of course, the range that we're actually reading. So that might be a 30 centimeters, that's in here, 0.3 meters. All the code today um, is in the DDD EXP repo. Uh, that repo's got lots of different projects and uh, developments as I'm working on DDD. The one I'm going to talk through today is uh, the 6HCSRO4 project. Our stuff stack is of course going to be based on the Pico and Pico's SDK in C++. I'm going to use micro ROS libraries in order to make the connections into the ROS2 world and publish that message. And we're going to use free RTOS in order to manage tasks. To read the HCSRO4, I've decided to go with the PIO approach and use Daniel's library, which is um, an excellent uh, piece of code to reuse. Allows me to manage both my HCSRO4s uh, through PIO and have less interrupts going on to my processor. Over in VS Code, let's have a look at our firmware that's going to go on the Pico. And this is in the firmware side of this project and the source folder. I've got a new agent that I've defined here called HCSRO4 agent. So this, this agent is surprisingly a public agent. For me, public agents means that it's actually going to run as a task. So it means that I've actually got a run method down here um, that's going to run a loop all the time, uh, taking sensor readings and publishing them. It's also a micro ROS entities object, which means that it's got the callbacks to create and destroy entities when we connect and disconnect via micro ROS, and they're there. But the real work, I guess, is in this add sensor. So we're going to add our, our front and rear sensors in here. And I'm adding them by just giving the trigger pin, um, uh, assuming that the echo is going to be one more than the trigger pin, which is the way that the PIO library works from Daniel. And then I'm also giving it a name, which is going to be the uh, range front or range rear. And the reason I need that name is because I need to publish that name as the frame ID. So um, that's what we've got in there. Um, to help us with that, I've defined a couple of private functions. One to set up my messages called setup range, and one to actually publish the range for a given sensor index. So those are the two key ones in there. Let's have a look at the CPP file. Adding a sensor, well, that's as easy as just instantiating a new distance sensor from Daniel's code. Um, the run loop, well, that's just going to go through all of the sensors that we've got, trigger them, wait until they finish sensing, and then publish the range for them. It'll do that roughly five times a second, which I think is enough for this sort of ultrasound sensor and for collision avoidance. Let's talk about publishing and our messages. So first of all, setting up the message type. Well, I've got um, the method, method set up range to do that. And that's just looping through the maximum number of uh, sensors I've got and sending, setting each one up as a range message. The reason I'm doing that separately is because of the name and actually getting that name in there. 
which is quite important, um, which we'll see in a second. Uh, the radiation type is uh, zero, which we talked about, which is ultrasound. I put in the field of view and I'm giving it to the minimum and maximums there. It was where we set up the sensor a little while ago. Uh, I didn't really talk about it too much there. We actually are doing a setup of the frame ID into uh, that message up here when we add a sensor in. So the messages need to have been set up before we call the first add sensor. Publish then. Well, publish is pretty simple and what I've showed previously on publishing, we're just going to populate the header with the timestamp and then we are going to populate the actual value of the range in there. Um, I'm doing a little check here to make sure that my range is um, that I've a sense is not greater than my maximum because um, Arvis really doesn't like that very much and indeed you know standard definition means I shouldn't publish anything bigger than maximum so I'm checking if it is I'm actually going to limit it uh, uh, to maximum and then I'm just using the publish uh, function on my micro ROS bridge so creating means destroying entities. Well, that's the same as we've seen previously. I'm just creating a publisher that I'm going to use for the publication. And I'm going to publish everything on the channel DDD ranges or the topic DDD range. So there we go. That's it. That's uh, the code in here. Let's have a look at main, which is the other bit I suppose to, to look at. And this is really only a simple change here. We're just adding a new object called range, which is of this HCRSO4 agent. I'm going to add my two sensors onto there. I'm using particularly bizarre GPI um, numbers because I just happen to be where they fit nicely on the board. And um, I'm starting that range up. I'm also going to give that range sensor to the DDD object because the DDD object is handling the real um, master connection into my MicroRos bridge. So where create entities and destroy entities are called, I'm using DDD objects to chain that through to any uh, subsequent um, uh, publishers like our, our HCRS04 agent. So I'm going to launch the um, RVs and configuration here and it's publishing our robots as well. And we can see here that I'm getting details back from two sensors and those are those big funnels going out the front and at the back. And as I put my hand in front of the front one, we got a bit of uh, reduction there. When I look at uh, the configuration in here, the real detail is that I've added in a range sensor in here, that it's looking at the DDD range topic, it's a best effort reliability policy and has a buffer length of five, which gives us those nice cones going out the front and the back. So we can now measure the distance between DDD and an object on the x-axis. This is really helpful for me to look at odometry. Is the movement of the wheels correctly updating the position of the robot? I'll talk more about odometry and calibration in a future video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it. And please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.